Hey what's up guys? Today I'll show you a drama fantasy film, Big Fish. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a father telling the story about how he caught a catfish that is said to have been living for thousands of years using his wedding ring as bait, which also happens to be during the time his son was born. Apparently, the father has been telling so many stories since his son was young, from his childhood, to when his son brought his prom date, up to the day his son is to be wed. At the son's wedding party in 2000, his father continues to tell his stories to the people attending the ceremony. The son confronts his father not long after. They get into an argument, and the son says some hurtful things to his father, having to listen to these stories all his life, he believes them to be lies. Because of that, they have stopped talking to each other since then. Three years later, the father is diagnosed with cancer. So the son and his pregnant French wife return to his hometown to spend time with the father. During the plane ride, the son recalls a story of his father's childhood encounter with a witch, who shows him his death in her glass eye. Right then comes a flashback of the father when he was still young, the father being the storyteller himself, walks to a haunted house with a group of other kids. They discuss the witch, whose glass eye reveals someone's death. The storyteller doesn't believe this, so one of his friends, a big brother, dares him to retrieve the eye. The storyteller enters the front yard, as the other kids watch him. Two of them flee out of fear, while the big brother and his little brother stay and witness his bravery. As the storyteller is about to knock, the witch opens the door. He introduces himself like the gentleman that he is, and tells the witch about the other kids wanting to see her glass eye. The storyteller brings the witch to the front gate, and lets the brothers see how they're going to die. When he escorts the witch back into the house, he asks to see how he will die. The witch doesn't hesitate, and reveals to him the prophecy. When he is done, the witch walks back inside the house, and the door closes itself, and the flashback ends. In the present, the son visits his parents' home, and tries to ask about the real events of his father's stories. The father, in spite of his illness, is confident that he doesn't die the way he is now. After their talk, the son leaves his father's room, and sees his old bedroom. The son gets another flashback of him getting sick with chickenpox. The father claims to have once been bedridden for three years, due to his rapid growth spurts. It seems that his muscles and bones couldn't keep up with his body's ambition. Another flashback happens. The storyteller as a kid, stays in bed, with the encyclopedia, as his only source of information. He reads about the common goldfish, revealing that if it stays inside a small tank, it will not grow big. So the bigger the tank, the larger the goldfish can get. He comes to the realization that the reason for his growth is that he is intended for bigger things. As soon as his bones have settled in their adult configuration, he sets upon his plan to make a bigger place for himself. He then becomes a locally famous sportsman, before being driven by his ambition to leave his hometown. Until one day, a stranger arrives, who happens to be a giant. This giant has been terrorizing the town, by eating livestock from the surrounding farms. The storyteller volunteers to try, and reason out with the misunderstood giant. So he goes to his cave, where he tries to talk to him. The giant tells him that he's just too big that he gets hungry all the time. The storyteller convinces him that the town is just too small for the giant. They set out into the world together. Before they leave, the town sets a parade for them. He is given the key to the city. As they travel, he and the giant find a fork in the road and decide to travel down separate paths. The storyteller follows a path through a swamp. He comes across an area covered in spider webs. After he passes through the webbed area, covered in spider bites, he discovers a secret town. The town has many cheerful locals there. The mayor claims that he is their expected visitor, but he seems to have arrived a little too early. Later, he meets the locals and befriends a famous poet from his hometown. While he, the poet, and the mayor have a conversation, the mayor's daughter steals his shoes and throws them on a wire where the rest of the town folk's shoes are hanging. Afterward, he agrees to spend the rest of the afternoon there, till eventually, he informs everyone that he needs to leave. They are shocked by his decision, but he makes a promise to the mayor's lovely daughter, that he will eventually return to that secret town. The storyteller walks back to the swamp barefoot. Soon after, he and the giant reunite and visit the circus. As the ringmaster introduces another big man to the crowd of spectators, the storyteller introduces the giant to them. Then he spots a beautiful young woman leaving, and everything around the storyteller suddenly stops. Apparently, the storyteller is love-struck at that time. Soon after, the giant gets a job in the circus. Meanwhile, the storyteller asks to work in the circus as well, and in return, the ringmaster reveals to the storyteller one detail about the beautiful young woman at the end of every month. 
Three years later, the storyteller discovers that the ringmaster is secretly a werewolf and is attacked by him accidentally, but he avoids getting the ringmaster shot with a silver bullet by playing fetch until he turns back into a human in the morning. The ringmaster, upon returning to normal, reveals the woman's name, who happens to be his future wife, and that she attends a specific university. Afterward, the storyteller says goodbye to his circus friends and rides three trains to make his way to that university. He shows up to the future wife's sorority and reveals his feelings for her. He tells her about the things he went through to finally meet her, but she tells him that she's engaged to be married to his childhood friend, exactly the shitty big brother. Despite the sad news, he is still convinced that he will marry her. He stalks his future wife for many days, even going so far as to plant thousands of daffodils, her favorite flowers, outside of her sorority house bedroom. Then the big brother visits the sorority, and brutally beats up the storyteller like a piece of shit, which however, prompts the future wife to break off their engagement and marry the storyteller. Not long after, the big brother dies of a heart attack as the witch had prophesied. The storyteller is soon hospitalized, and receives mail about being drafted into the army, and is being sent to fight in the war. Since just meeting the future wife, he knows he cannot survive being away from her that long. So he takes every hazardous assignment he can find, hoping he gets his time down to less than a year, instead of three years. He is once offered a secret mission to steal the plans for the power plant, he jumps at the chance to serve his country. So on the day of his mission, he parachutes into the middle of a North Korean military show, seals important documents, and hides in the tent of the Siamese twins, who are part of the show. Over the next hour, he describes his love for his future wife to the Siamese twins, and the ordeal that has brought him before meeting them. He convinces the Siamese twins to help him go home, in exchange for making them celebrities. And so the Siamese twins and the storyteller begin their arduous journey, halfway around the world. Unfortunately, there is no way to send a message back to America, so the army believes the storyteller is dead. They bring the news to the future wife, making her fall into despair. But four months later, the storyteller makes his way home to her. The flashback ends, in the present, the son confronts his father again, and tells him that his stories are all lies. He uses the iceberg as an example, that only a few percent of the iceberg is seen, but the bottom part of it isn't seen, much like his father's stories. Soon after their argument, the son is in the shed by the pool, and spots an old automated hand, and gets another flashback of his father's stories. In the flashback, upon the storyteller returning home, he becomes a traveling salesman for a company that sells automated hands. He uses the money and sets it aside for his dream home, a house with a white picket fence. A few years later, he adds new products in cities, until his territory stretched from the coast of nearby states. One day, he drives to a local bank, and crosses paths with the poet. He unwittingly helps the poet rob a failing bank with no money, that has been bankrupted by speculators in real estate. Afterward, they drive to a getaway. As they drive, the storyteller later inspires the poet to work on Wall Street. Eventually, the poet becomes a wealthy broker, and repays the storyteller with $10,000. Despite the storyteller protesting, the poet says it's his fee as the poet's career advisor. So the storyteller uses it to obtain his dream house. In the present time, while still doubting, the son investigates the truth behind his father's tales. He sees a deed with the name of the mayor's daughter, and the address to the secret town. So the son drives all the way to the location, where he meets the now older version of the mayor's daughter. The son then confronts the mayor's daughter, and asks her if she is having an affair with his shitty father. It seems that this is his way, of trying to reconcile with his feelings of what his father really is. So the mayor's daughter tells him the story of how his father helped the secret town. Another flashback happens with the storyteller walking to the secret town. He finds it to be in ruins. So he rescues it from bankruptcy by buying it in an auction and rebuilding it with the help of his friends he has met along the way. Later on, he visits the swampy area and meets the mayor's daughter living in that house he wishes to buy, but will still give the house back to the mayor's daughter afterward. She, however, denies the offer. But the storyteller is persistent and still helps rebuild and refurbish the house. The mayor's daughter reveals to the son that although she loved the storyteller, he remains faithful to his wife and declines her kiss. She later signs the deed to the house, and this is apparently the last thing on the storyteller's list of helping rescue the secret town. In the present, the son later returns home, but learns that his father has had a stroke. So he stays with him at the hospital. The family doctor finally tells the real story of how the son was really born. The family doctor says that he prefers the exciting story of his birth, rather than the real but boring details of it. Soon after, the storyteller wakes up, but, unable to speak much, he explains the entire setting of his real death, based on what he saw in the witch's eye. 
To help his father, son tries to calm him by narrating what he always guessed his father saw in the glass eye. The son starts telling his father of their imagined daring escape from the hospital to the nearby river, where everyone from the storyteller's past is glad to be there to see him off. The son carries his father through the joyful crowd into the river, where his father transforms into the giant catfish and swims away. Through telling this story, the son learns to forgive him. Eventually, his father dies, satisfied with his living a fantastic life out of the daily ordinaries. At the funeral, the son and his French wife are surprised when all the people from the father's stories come to the service. Though each one of them is slightly less fantastical than how his father originally described. Many people seem to have attended his funeral. Not long after, the son asks for their accounts on his father's stories, where they confirm the credibility, but also fantasize his acts in return. The movie ends years later, when the son passes on his father's stories to his own child. The son believes that by telling his father's stories so many times that his father becomes the stories. The stories live on after his father. And in that way, he comes immortal, just like the tale of the big fish. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.